and the moment the story begins to be elaborated, the boredom sets in. The story talks louder than the paint. By glass, you cut the paintings away from their surroundings, and by glazing them, I feel it gives an added depth and texture to the quality of the type of paint that I use. I couldn't do the particular kind of thing I'm trying to do, which is to make a chaos in an isolated area with varnished pictures or other type of paint. I need this absolutely thin, stained background against which I can do this image which I'm trying to do and which I've never really achieved. I don't want the reflections to be there. I feel that they should be put up with. I feel that because of the very flat way I paint. The glass helps to unify the picture. I also like the distance between what has been done and the onlooker that the glass creates. I like, as it were, the removal of the object as far as possible. <laughs> Oddly enough, I even like Rembrandt's under glass. And it's true to say, in many ways, they're more difficult to see, but you can still look into them. It's the distance that this thing is shut away from the spectator. photographs all the time because animal movement and human movement are continually linked in my study of human movement. We are animals, aren't we? I mean, we're just part of animal life. I would like my paintings to have the same immediate effect as a photograph of a wild animal after the kill. We've evolved over millions of years into the state of unnaturalness that we are in now. Humans are totally unnatural, and they vary from race to race in their degrees of unnaturalness. I'm not here to preach or anything. I work as near to my instinct as I possibly can, and that's all I can do. Somebody gave me the head of Blake, which you can see there, and I did three different versions from it. But that wasn't a homage to the work of Blake, because his work doesn't mean anything to me at all. Rather, it was the image itself which inspired these paintings. I do find that images, more than words, give me an idea or release my creative block. I tried to do these paintings of the Pope after Velasquez, but they never came off. I never got the colour, and I never got the screen vibrant enough. I think you have to break technique, break tradition to do something really new. You always go back into tradition, but you have to break it and reinvent it first. Pope's, oh, it doesn't come from anything to do with religion. It comes from an obsession with a photograph that I know of Velasquez's Pope Innocent X. I think it is, to me, one of the greatest portraits that have ever been made, and I became obsessed by it. It's a picture that I've always been haunted by. 
I buy book after book with this illustration of Velasquez's Pope, and it opens up all sorts of feelings and areas of... Well, I was going to say, imagination, even, in me. I disliked my father, but I was sexually attracted to him when I was young. When I first sensed it, well, I hardly knew it was sexual. It was only later, through the grooms and the people at the stables I had affairs with, that I realised that it was a sexual thing towards my father. You could say that a scream is a horrific image. In fact, I wanted to paint the scream more than the horror. I think that if I had really thought about what causes somebody to scream, it would have made the scream that I tried to paint more successful. In fact, they were too abstract. I've always been very moved by the movements of the mouth and the shape of the mouth and the teeth. People say that these have all sorts of sexual implications. I like, you may say, the glitter and colour that comes from the mouth. And I've always hoped, in a sense, to be able to paint the mouth, like Monet painted a sunset. I love the mouth, because it's rather like a turner. It's got all these beautiful colours about it. It's got these lovely vibrations of colour. People seem to think that in my paintings I'm trying to put across a feeling of suffering and the ferocity of life. But I don't think of it at all in that way myself. You see, the very fact of being born is a very ferocious thing. Just existence itself as one goes between birth and death. It's not that I want to emphasise that side of things, but I suppose if you're trying to work as near to your nervous system as you can, that's what automatically comes out. Life is just filled, really, with suffering and despair. Battleship Potemkin was a film I saw almost before I started to paint, and it deeply impressed me. I mean, the whole film, as well as the Odessa step sequence and this shot. I did hope one day to make the best painting of the human cry. I wasn't able to do it, and it's much better in the Eisenstein, and there it is. <laughs> no work that anybody can ever do has got the violence that life itself has got. Real imagination is technical imagination. It is in the ways you think up to bring an event to life again. It is in the search for the technique to trap the object at a given moment. Then the technique and the object become inseparable. The object is the technique and the technique is the object. Art lies in the...